transactional processing, analytical processing, JSON documents, data consistency, high availability, self-healing, automatic failover, sharding, replication, scaling up, scaling out, data in transit encryption, data at rest encryption, distributed SQL, multi-cloud, parallel processing, columnar storage, scheduled backups, server updates, monitoring, disaster recovering. Wow, that's a lot of things that you need to take care of when you are designing and building or even maintaining your data infrastructure. That's the reason MariaDB created SkySQL to free you from those tasks so you can focus on delivering value. I like to call SkySQL cloud native database because it checks all the boxes. It's built on cloud native standards like Kubernetes, infrastructure agnostic, you can deploy to multiple clouds, infinitely and dynamically scalable. So all the benefits of the NoSQL world are now available in a relational database. It's configurable as a code through an API. It's observable. And of course, it enables cloud native development. SkySQL is tailored to production environments that require high levels of security and performance, but you can use it also in development and test environments as well. After all, the more similar your environments are, the best results you get from a development and test uh, processes. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with SkySQL, that is how to spin up a service and how to connect to it using a SQL client. So if you go to mariadb.com, you will find an option there to uh, create an account on SkySQL, or you can go to cloud.mariadb.com and it's the same. So you will arrive to the sign up page where you can uh, create an account. I'm going to go through the process of creating the account. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just have to follow the steps there. Uh, you can use these options or your email. Uh, the important part here is that once you sign in, you will arrive to the SkySQL portal. And so there you'll find um, a menu. And this, I wanted to show you this option. The documentation is there and it's, uh, it's pretty good. It has all the steps that I'm going to show you uh, in case uh, you need them and much more. Now you have also here, for example, uh, the, the, the account uh, options. You can see that I'm in on the uh, uh, foundation tier. There's another one called power and it, that gives you even more, well, power uh, to customize your uh, services. Mm, but let's get just started with this. So let's launch a service. Just click this button and you will be presenter, presented with all the options for this. And it's, it's really just a few options here. Uh, you can pick between uh, transactions, that is kind of uh, if you want to store order, orders, products, uh, that kind of stuff, right? Or analytics where you want to maybe create reports, for example. So you need to create data and, and uh, uh, calculate averages and, and any kind of functions there, really. Um, let's go with transactions. And depending on the, uh, this is called the uh, type of service you select, you'll get different uh, topologies. So in the case of transactions, for example, we get a uh, single node, which is good for development environments. Then you have replicated, which is a, a good option for um, a production environments because you have now high availability, right? It's replicated now. You don't have to worry about it. It's going to look like it's just one database. You connect to it like if it was one one database, but it's replicated, everything's automatic. And you have uh, self-healing, uh, automated failover, and um, scaling. Now you can go even further and pick expand or distribute it. And then you they say indestructible, uh, because it's true. This is uh, a distributed SQL um, database now. Mm, and so you can you can scale to millions of transactions per second, which is pretty impressive. And well, you can just keep adding nodes as you as your business grow grows. Mm. Let's go with single node because I'm going to be the only one really connecting to this database. Uh, so that's that's more than enough. And then you can pick the cloud provider. Uh, by the way, I encourage you to actually uh, uh, experiment with these ones because you'll get more options there. Uh, as you can see here in this uh, uh, list of uh, features. Uh, so you can pick uh, Amazon, web service, uh, Amazon uh, Web Services, AWS, and you'll get all the regions. Or Google Cloud, you get all the regions that are available on SkySQL for Google Cloud as well. So let's go with Google Cloud this time. 
and a region is just where the service is going to be uh, created. Mm. So, for example, um, let's assume I'm creating a development environment and all my developers are, my team is in uh, Finland. I'm in Finland right now, so I'm going to pick that one. Mm. If we were creating a production environment, then probably we will uh, pick, uh, uh, depending, it could be also Finland, but it could be uh, something else, depending where your actual application is going to be deployed. Remember, this is the database. Um, mm, so, pick the one that makes the most uh, sense, of course. And you have plenty of options. All right. That's the regions. Then you can see uh, the cost per month, for example. You can see uh, uh, how much each kind of instance size will cost per month or per hour. I think there is also here an estimated service cost. This is not, uh, uh, this is an estimation. It could be more or it could be less, depending uh, how you use the service. So let's get back here to the uh, instance size. Um, this is well documented. Uh, I'm going to go through all the options just, uh, for example, for this demo, I think 8 gigabytes of memory and a Sky 2x8, it's called, uh, would be more than enough. So I'm going to go with that. Again, feel free to experiment with this. Mm. Let's see what else. Uh, then the uh, transactional storage size. So how, how much data are you going to you're going to uh, store in this database. So I know I'm just going to uh, serve just a few rows probably at some point. Um, you can configure this later as well. Then you can pick the server version, try to pick the latest one. That's what's recommended. And you can give it a service name. So for example, well, let's use example. And this is a development environment. So I'm going to call it dev. And there you go. You see the estimated service service cost. We have uh, uh, 500 um, credit there, so that allows me to play for a while with this service. Um, then you click Launch Service. So again, just a few a few clicks, and um, this is going to take a little bit of time because it's you know it's creating all this mm, infrastructure there in the cloud. Uh, so let me just. Um, meanwhile show you the tool that I'm going to use to connect to this service so you can use any other tools but I'm going to use the beaver which is a, a free tool you can download it there are others for example uh, Haiti I think I actually have it here Haiti SQL uh, there is um, the, the grip also that's another option this is not free though uh, it's pretty good uh, but this uh, dbeaver is good, or you can use the command line tool if you want, uh, that comes with the MariaDB server if you have it locally, which I have. You can see here, I have been playing already with dbeaver, and there is uh, an instance there, local host. So there's probably some database there, uh, but we don't want to use that, right? We want to use this one. So let's wait until the the service is ready and we'll get back to the um, connection part. I don't know if you can see this well, but I just received a notification that says your database is ready. So if we check the Sky SQL portal, then we see example dev and it says that it's healthy. That's a good thing. And if we expand that section, you'll find service details. That's what we configured before. The fully qualified domain name, that's where the service is, is, uh, is kind of the URL you'll have to use to connect to the service. You can copy it from here. There is uh, an option to uh, apply a custom configuration that you can create here through the configuration manager. There are a bunch of options there that you can tweak. And then the spending uh, section that shows how much uh, you have spent um, on the service. Now, uh, the cool thing is that the, the UI kind of guides you. So it says your service is ready. Please set up secure access for the service so you can connect to it. So let's do that. Let's click that option. And uh, there's a bunch of uh, things that you can do here. You can, for example, if there was a production uh, environment, you can uh, um, specify the IP address of the server that is going to connect to this service. Or you can use your current IP address, for example, for development. That's a good option. Or you can use uh, any kind of uh, um, 
masks here if you want to connect from multiple devices or even any devices um, I'm just gonna use that option there so I can connect from this machine this is a development and it's an example so that's fine click done and this is going to create a task and eventually this is going to be configured automatically um, what else do we need to do here okay so there is a uh, uh, an option here to connect to service. By the way, if you didn't find the uh, security access option, you want to change it later, here you find it, right? You can add more IP addresses there. But yeah, so back to connect to the service. Mm. If we click that option, then we find all the cool things that we need to uh, configure to the service. So let's have a look at it. We have a username, a default password, and then it says certificate authority chain you need to download that file so i'm going to click that and if i go to the uh, downloads um, uh, folder or directory in my computer you'll see that uh, the file is there um, we'll get back to this in a moment but then mm, we already did that we have our own ip address configured there so we can uh, connect from this computer and here's how you can connect to the service using the command line interface that's one option oh by the way the task is completed so we can actually connect to it soon or now and um you can just copy this thing uh, on the terminal and then you'll be um you'll be connected to the service uh here's how you can change the default password i recommend doing that as well uh, I'm going to leave it as is, and let's then go to the, what was it that I was going to use, uh, dbeaver, dbeaver, yep. So let's create a new connection here, and it's going to be similar with any other tools, it's going to, it's just the UI is different, but you'll see the same concepts, and in popular you'll find MariaDB, of course you'll have to find it there, MariaDB, <laughs> click next, and there you go so server host so server host is you can get it from here by the way like copy this or if you are already here you can just copy it from this uh, um, command line mm, mm, uh, a snippet of code is the same i'm gonna copy it then the port the port is right here let's copy it database uh, we didn't have any database i think right now we'll create one in a moment uh what else do we need here username of course so the username is this the password is all this thing thank you mm, what else do we need here the driver pick the mariadb driver there's something important remember that we downloaded this thing this file here let me show you over here we need the location of that file so i'm gonna copy i think there is an option to copy uh where is it where is copy copy as a path name so i can paste the location of that file here because you have to go to driver properties or whatever the option is in your tool and set the server i think it's server ssl let me try to find it server ssl cert there you go so you need to specify the location of that file there and the other thing that you need to do here is to set the use use ssl true okay um, let's test the connection sure connected so it worked we can click let me actually get back here. Do we have a way? Oh, no, no, I meant here, main. I can configure a kind of a name for this. Maybe not. All right, finish. Oh, it's, it shows it here. Very good. So now we are connected to the SkySQL, um, the SkySQL um, service, and we can create a database, for example, demo, I don't know, whatever. It's fine and in this uh in this uh database you can just uh open a new uh, for example sql script and then you can play with this we can create uh 
a table, um, I don't know, person, whatever, right? Uh, you can, I'm not gonna do it, I'm just gonna leave that to you. You can uh, update, delete, insert into all the good stuff that you can do with SQL. You can do it here and it's gonna be connected to this database. Um, what is, should I show you over here? Let me see. Oh, yeah, there are some uh, cool stuff that you should be aware of. Monitoring. So if you click here, you will be uh, uh, directed to another um, kind of a website, if you wish, which is SkySQL Monitoring. And uh, there you'll find tools to kind of see what's going on with your service. And that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, of course, it's a new service, so we won't see a lot of uh, cool <laughs> graphs here yet but be aware that actually we do <laughs> be aware of this tool because uh, it's going to help you a lot mm, uh, explore it uh, check all the options uh, something I like like for example if there's uh, something happening here okay okay let's say here you can add an annotation say like uh, um, it was uh, black Friday or whatever, you know, and you can just um, keep track of, of what's going on. Uh, this is, I'm just is, is scratching here the, the surface of this. Uh, you'll find logs, you find, um, remember, the documentation alerts, which is in a tech preview right now. That's pretty cool as well. So check that out. Uh, there are many things you can do with Sky SQL. Remember to check all the other um, service services that you can create, for example, on analytics, expand this is pretty cool because you can scale kind of like with no limits. You just add, keep adding nodes, and uh, and you will uh, um, you can grow your your database as much as you want. All right, so what's next? I encourage you to check out the documentation for MariaDB expand, max scale, column store, and all the connectors that are available for Java, C++, Python. Node.js, and several others that are uh, contributed by the community. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.